Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says uh, if you want to take the derivative of f divided by g, that's going to be g times f primed minus f times g primed, uh, all divided by g squared. So in other words, uh, derivative of the top divided by the bottom is going to be bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all divided by the bottom squared. Okay, so uh, you want to be very careful, just like with the product rule, you know, we want to be very careful. Uh, this is not the same thing as uh, f primed over g primed. Okay, so uh, if you want to do a derivative of f divided by g, it's not the same thing as uh, derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. So it would be nice if that were the case, but unfortunately not. Um, so let's uh, see why this is true. Actually, let's go ahead and do a proof. Um, there's actually a couple different ways to prove this, uh, but one of them and uh, the easier one actually requires the chain rule, which we haven't talked about yet. So uh, once we do that, then we'll do the other proof. But for now, let's just go ahead and do it directly. <clears throat> uh, and we'll do a couple examples in the next couple of videos. So this one's just going to be the proof pretty much. So let's just go ahead and uh, jump right in. So d dx of f of x over g of x. Uh, usually at this step, you know, we make a substitution, let's say big F of X is uh, F over G. Um, let's go ahead and skip that. So, uh, so we've done that enough times to it, uh, to the point where I think we'll be able to do it without it. But um, if you haven't been following along with the other videos, uh, you can go ahead and see what I'm talking about. Uh, if you look at the video for the product rule proof uh, and for the sum and difference rule proof, um, we do something like that in there. But anyway, continuing with this. Uh, limit as h goes to 0 of, so uh, this, let's go ahead and move this up a little bit. This is going to be uh, f of x plus h over g of x plus h minus f of x over g of x. All right. <clears throat> and then all that's divided by h. Okay, so what we have here is a complex fraction, right? Here's a big top and a big bottom, and inside of the big top there's another top and another bottom. So uh, what we want to do is simplify that, get rid of the complex fraction, <clears throat> and the way we do that is by getting a common denominator up on the top. So uh, we can do that, or we can do what we've uh, been doing. Um, we haven't done it in a while, but we've done it before. Uh, let's see, okay, here's g of x plus h, here's g of x, so let's multiply the big top and the big bottom by g of x plus h times g of x. And we're going to do that because it's going to kill both of these denominators. All right? So when we do that, we're going to have uh, g of x plus h here times g of x. And then all divided by the same thing, <coughs> g of x plus h, g of x. All right, so then that's all going to be multiplied by this stuff up here uh, on the top. So let's go ahead and uh, distribute that. So we'll zoom back out a little bit. So let's go ahead and um, not show as much detail as we've uh, been, but let's go ahead and uh, just talk about what's going to happen. So we're going to distribute this through to each term on the top. So when we have f of x plus h over g of x plus h times this times that, uh, the g of x plus h, uh, those are going to cancel. And what we're just going to be left with is f of x plus h times that g of x. All right, that happens from the first term. Uh, what happens in the second term? Well, we have minus f of x over g of x times these two things here. Well, this g of x is going to cancel with that g of x, and we're just going to be left with f of x times the g of x plus h. All right? So if you're a little unsure about that, um, you can go ahead and write it out in more detail uh, if you're following along with your own piece of paper. But anyway, um, what we have on the bottom is h times g of x plus h times g of x. All right, not much we can do on the bottom for now. Um, all right, so it's not really obvious where to go next, but what we're going to do is uh, the same thing we did with the proof of the product rule. We're going to add and subtract something um, in a way that's, uh, or we're going to add and subtract something that's going to be useful to us. So remember, that's just the same thing as uh, adding zero in a fancy way that's going to be useful to us. So let's go ahead and add f of x g of x and then we'll subtract the same thing. All right, and then uh, we're going to do that on the top, so we need to extend this. Okay, 
So, you know, we just added and subtracted the same thing, so we really just didn't uh, do anything. We just added zero, right? But we've added zero in a way that's useful to us. So let's go ahead and see how that's useful. Um, this is going to equal the limit as h goes to zero. Uh, let's group the first one with the fourth one. Okay, so this will be uh, f of x plus h g of x minus f of x g of x. And then let's um, split that up into a separate fraction from, so the second and the third one, they'll be grouped together, uh, but let's put them in a different fraction. So we have h g of x plus h, let's try that again, g of x plus h uh, g of x. Okay, so that's that. Um, and so that's just for the first uh, fraction here. Then for the second one, what do we have? We have plus uh, negative f of x g of x plus h. And then a plus f of x g of x. Okay, so um, we got to be careful because this minus sign is only on this term right here. Okay, and not on this, so this still has a plus sign on it. So that's why we're writing it like this. Um, and then h g of x plus h g of x. <clears throat> okay, so we're taking a limit of this whole thing, remember, so we got to put brackets around all of it because we split it up into two fractions now. So first of all, let's get rid of this goofy minus sign hanging out in front here. Um, if we want to do that, then uh, we want to factor out a minus 1 from this whole thing here. So let's pull it out from the top. If we factor out a minus 1 from the top, then um, we're going to put uh, or brackets up here, like so. But then this plus sign right here is going to become a minus sign. All right. So now this minus sign is being multiplied by the entire top up here, uh, and that means we can pull it off of the fraction. So uh, it's going to combine with this plus sign just to become a minus sign. So when you have plus minus, uh, plus a negative, it just becomes a minus sign. Okay, so that's what's going on there. And now we can actually drop these red brackets. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's good. Um, now what? Now let's uh, erase this up here. Let's go ahead and work our way back up. Okay, we're going to work our way back up just so we can uh, keep this on the same screen because um, it'll be easier that way. So, working our way back up, this is going to equal uh, the limit as h goes to zero of what? Well, here we have a limit of this mess minus this mess. So, let's split it up into a uh, limit of this minus limit of this. All right. Uh, so, we're going to do that, and we're also going to simplify each of these a little bit. So, uh, for the first one, let's just look at the first one for now. Um, notice on the top, there's a common factor of g of x that we can pull out, right? So f of x plus h times g of x minus f of x times g of x. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to give us f of x plus h minus f of x, uh, close bracket, and then we have g of x out there. And then on the bottom, what do we have? Uh, still the same stuff on the bottom. h g of x plus h g of x. <clears throat> okay. So um, yeah, these g of x are going to cancel. So, okay. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, these cancel. Alright, so that's good. Um, now let's go ahead and uh, look at the second term here. So then we also have minus the limit as h goes to zero of anything we can factor here. Yeah, here's a common factor of f of x. Okay, uh, f of x times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x. So let's pull that out. It's going to be f of x times uh, the quantity g of x plus h minus g of x close bracket. All of that's divided by h, g of x plus h, g of x. All right, so nothing really cancels here, um, but that's okay, because <clears throat> what happens next, well, if we continue our way back up here, um, let's actually also erase this. So continuing uh, on upwards, this is going to equal, uh, what do we have here? We have f of x plus h minus f of x over h times this here. So let's go ahead and write that like this. Limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x. All right, uh, all over h. And then let's multiply that, or let's write that as times one 
over g of x plus h. All right, so we got a limit of this uh, product here. Okay. So we're just going to take this and rewrite it like this, um, <clears throat> and we'll see why in just a sec. But continuing with this, uh, we can simplify this a little bit here. So this is a limit as h goes to zero. So uh, here's f of x, here's g of x. Um, f of x and g of x, they don't depend on h, right? And likewise, this limit does not depend on x. So as far as the limit is concerned, uh, x is just a constant, because this uh, limit depends on h and only h. So if you have x's floating around by themselves that could be pulled off, uh, then go ahead and do it. You know, this one can, like this g of x here, that's stuck in there, right? Because it's being subtracted, uh, and it's kind of stuck with these uh, down here also. But this g of x down here, and this f of x up here, they can be pulled out of the limit. So let's go ahead and do that. So remember, uh, yes, uh, x is a variable, but the limit depends only on h. So uh, the limit doesn't care what x does. As far as it's concerned, x is just a constant. So uh, anyway, what do we have left in here? Limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x. That's still left in there. All divided by uh, h. And then we're going to do the same thing we did over here, where we're going to multiply it by 1 over g of x plus h. So that'll take care of this. OK. Um, so now we have this, so let's go ahead and uh, go back over here. So limit of this times this, so we're going to skip some uh, small details here because we've uh, used them over and over already. Um, limit of this times this. Uh, if you have a limit of a product, remember that's the same thing as the product of the limits, right? So uh, limits behave nicely like that. Uh, derivatives don't in general, uh, but uh, limits do. Okay. So that's nice. So um, what is this? In other words, what I'm saying is this is uh, equal to the limit of this times the limit of this. All right. And what's the limit of this? Well, it's uh, f prime of x, right? That's just the derivative of x. And what about this? Well, uh, if we look at this one, that's going to be limit <clears throat> as h goes to 0 of 1 over g of x plus h. All right. So what's that? Well. Um, Technically speaking, that's going to be equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 divided by the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h. All right. So uh, on the top, of course, that's just 1. That's just a constant, right? What about on the bottom? Um, well, we can say g of limit as h goes to 0 of x plus h. All right. So um, if we focus on this right here, <clears throat> limit is h goes to 0 of x plus h, that's just x plus 0, which is just x. So this whole thing is 1 over g of x. All right. Now remember, um, subtle detail to point out real quick. Uh, how do we know that we can put the limit inside of g? Because g is continuous. And you know that's a property of continuous functions, is you can uh, push and pull limits in and out of them. Uh, how do we know g is continuous? Well, it's continuous because it's differentiable. And uh, if a function is differentiable, then it has to be continuous. Um, we proved that in an earlier video. And uh, then you want to ask, okay, how do we know that it's differentiable? Well, g has to be differentiable, otherwise none of this makes any sense. Um, we can't really talk about this at all. And uh, the formula wouldn't really work. So we have to assume that g is differentiable in order to do this at all. And uh, because g is differentiable, then it's continuous. Because it's continuous, we can shove the limit inside of it. And because we can shove the limit inside of it, then we get this result here. Um, so that's good. So then this is just 1 over g of x. OK, so that's for the first uh, term here. Now, what about the second term? Um, let's go ahead and erase this. Uh, now, for the second term, uh, we have minus f of x over g of x. All right, times what? Times a limit of this times that. So again, that's the same thing as the limit of this times the limit of that. And what's the limit of this? It's g prime of x. What's the limit of that? Well, it's the exact same thing as this. It's just 1 over g of x. OK? So notice what we have here. Uh, f prime of x over g of x. All right, let's go ahead and uh, write that over here. That's uh, f prime of x over g of x. OK? And how do we simplify this? Uh, 
f times g primed over g times g, so that's going to be minus uh, f of x times g primed of x over g of x uh, squared, actually. g times g gives us g squared. Okay? So um, now what? Well, we're almost there. There's pretty much just one step left. Um, here, f primed over g, then this is fg primed over g squared. So we want to simplify and get a common denominator. So let's go ahead and uh, move this equal sign a little bit. So if we multiply this guy by g of x over g of x, I kind of cramp that in there. And, uh, I'm accidentally erasing everything. Uh, e of x minus. Okay. Um, whoops. There we go. All right, now we multiply this first term by g of x over g of x, and now we have a common denominator. So uh, let's go ahead and erase this stuff. We don't need any more. So this is going to equal what? Equals uh, g of x times f prime of x uh, minus, oops, minus f of x uh, times g prime of x. all over g of x squared. So we have that common denominator now, right? Um, we got it from multiplying this by that. So uh, this is this is our result here, our final result. Bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So that's the uh, direct proof of the chain rule, or sorry, of the quotient rule. Um, the other proof uses the chain rule, is what I was thinking of. Uh, and that's actually much easier, but uh, we haven't talked about the chain rule yet, so we can't use it. So again, here's the direct proof of the quotient rule, and in the next couple of videos, we'll see some examples of how to use it.